Hey, this is Adam Barber. You know, if you're a believer, God has given you a ministry. Now, ministry is not always going out on the street and preaching to people or maybe getting up in a pulpit and doing that every week. But he has committed to all of us what is known as the ministry of reconciliation. And if you go to 2 Corinthians, and this is chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, it says this, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. You know, the way that God reconciled us to himself was in the death of his son, uh, in the crucifixion of his son, the most horrible way possible to die and to suffer. And, you know, reconciliation, when you're bringing two parties together that are at, uh, at variance with each other or they're, they're at odds with one another, um, they're estranged, they're enemies, uh, you know, that reconciliation is often messy. And it, it, since God has reconciled us to himself in the death of his son, it doesn't get any messier than that. Uh, but, you know, when we're reconciled to another human being, like a, like a marriage or a friendship or even a family relationship that, that's, that's, uh, that you're estranged from each other, you know, that's going to be messy. It's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult for both parties that are involved. And that's why most of the time, most people don't want to do them. You know, we, we don't want to do that. We just want to stay bitter and angry at each other, you know, because, be, you know, we think that that's going to be easier, even though that bitterness kills us eventually. Uh, you know, but when you're, when you're reconciled to someone, you know, I, I think of it a lot like surgery. You know, if you see someone that's had a had a, a slash or a cut, a really deep wound where the skin is laid open, this gets a little gross. And, you know, they, they go into the ER and the doctor comes in, you know, and, and you know, the, as soon as he walks in the room, it's already a huge medical bill. But anyway, you know, he comes in there and he starts assessing everything, and, you know, putting some deadening around that. And then he takes uh, the stitching out that has, you know, the, that has the, the needle to pierce the skin. And what does he do? He gets on that one side of the, the wound and he pierces that skin and he brings it over just like we're knitting some kind of sweater or something. And then he pierces the other side of that skin and he goes back and forth and back and forth and he pulls it tight and pulls that skin back together. Now, that sounds really painful. I guess that's why they deaden it beforehand. But so, you know, he reconciles that wound, those two pieces of flesh back together. And it's sore afterwards. It hurts. You know, I know I had, you know, most of my, or you know, a good half of my hand and part of my arm uh, that was uh, amputated and taken out and all, all up around to my elbow. And it took a, about a year, year and a half to heal up. And that was painful. It was pain. It was painful uh, because it took time, and it took time for that wound to heal. And when we're reconciled to another person, it takes time to heal, and it's painful. There's days where you know you may not really think about it, and then there's other days where it's just man, it's just all you can do if you make it from sun up to sunset. Sunset. Uh, so it takes that little bit of time, and 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 you know, like I said, it it hurts, but it's necessary. You know, a lot of a lot of times the things that are good for us that are necessary they just hurt you know and and they're not easy to do and reconciliation is just one of those things you know we know that we want to see the other side of it that we want to see uh, uh the relationship brought back into right standing but we just don't want to do the work and the blood sweat and tears that go through it to get into that and you know and it says that jesus was obedient even unto death or the, even the death of the cross, you know, because because of the joy that was set before him. He saw that joy set before him, that reconciliation, that his death, his burial, and his resurrection was going to offer to all those that would believe on him and trust his sacrifice, his, his, his finished work on the cross for our sins. And he saw that set before him. So because he did that, he was able to endure the cross, the suffering, the shame, and the death that, that he had to suffer and to die because he saw that reconciliation that it was going to bring to mankind. And so often when, you know, when we're looking at the reconciliation that, that we're looking for, whether it's with a, with a spouse, an estranged spouse, or a friend or a family member, 
because we can see that joy that's set before us, we can see that relationship, that, that bridge uh, being rebuilt, or maybe this the, the old bridge with some of the debris that's cluttered around, uh, you know, cleared away. We can endure that pain and that suffering of rebuilding that relationship together. We can endure that surgery, that stitching together, you know, and it may take days, weeks, months, years, maybe even decades, but anything worth doing like that is going to be worth doing. It's going to be worth, you know, putting in some time, putting in some effort and having to endure some hardship. So, you know, think, think on these things. Think about that. Think about our, our reconciliation that God has, has, has bought for us in the death of his son. And think about the reconciliation that we're seeking with other people. And is it going to be easy? No, but it is going to be worth it. And since it is worth it, it's going to be a little painful sometimes. But thankfully, we don't have to go through those things alone. We don't have to suffer that pain alone. You know, and Jesus is not unsympathetic to that suffering and that, that pain, those fears that we fear, that, that we feel in life because he experienced those himself. And so he is not only sympathetic, but he is more than willing to comfort us and to be there with us in those trials and that healing process. So as always, think on these things, read on these things, and don't take my word for it. Study it for yourself.